Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. <clears throat> Today we're looking at rates of reactions, and in particular we're looking at the reaction between sodium bicarbonate and vinegar, or bicarbonate of soda and vinegar. So here we have some vinegar, here we have some bicarbonate of soda. The bicarbonate of soda is a white powder. We put some here into this plate. Let's have a look at what happens when we add some vinegar to bicarbonate of soda. Do you see how it fizzes up? It's a little bit difficult to see, but let's put a bit more in. And it effervesces. Now, we're going to measure the rate of this reaction by doing the following. We have a bottle here. We have a little balloon with a set amount of bicarbonate of soda. We have a certain concentration of vinegar in the bottle. <clears throat> and we are going to then tip the balloon up and start timing and measure the rate of the reaction. So here is our stopwatch. Are we ready to see what happens when we tip the bicarbonate of soda into our vinegar? On our marks, get set, go. And as soon as the balloon inflates we stop it and that was 5,82 seconds. So the moment the balloon is fully inflated we stop it 5,82 seconds. So we're going to measure the rate of the reaction. What is produced? We're going to produce a volume of gas in meters cubed of gas in a certain time and we know that in this first instance, the, we know that the volume of the balloon I measured was 60 milliliters. Now we've got to convert that to meters cubed, the, the SI unit, times 10 to the minus 6. That was the volume produced over the time was 5,8 seconds. In fact, 5,82 seconds. Right, now we have doubled the concentration of the vinegar solution. We've got the same amount of powder in the balloon. Let's see what happens to the rate of the reaction when we have double the powder. On our mark, uh, double the concentration of vinegar. On our marks, get set, go. And that was 3,38 seconds. 3,38 seconds to blow up the balloon. So, that was our second case with double the concentration of vinegar in our bottle. So, this was with um, one amount or one concentration, one amount of vinegar. And we're going to get an answer, and then with two amounts of vinegar, and we use the same formula, and it was 3,38. So again, we blew up the balloon 60 times 10 to the minus 6 over 3,38 seconds. And then let's work out what the rates of the reaction were using um, double the concentration of vinegar, and this would be half the concentration of vinegar. Vinegar. So let's work it out. Sixty times ten exponential minus six. Divided by 5,82 equals 1,03 times 10 to the minus 4. And let's work it out in the second case. 60 
times 10 exponential minus 6 divided by 3.38 and it's 1 comma 7 7 times 10 to the minus 4. So, that was with 2, twice the concentration, half the concentration. What happened to our rate of reaction? Well, look at this, 1.77 compared to 1.03. That is nearly approaching three quarters more than the first case. So we see that increasing our concentration of one of the reactants has increased the rate of the reaction. Or in other words, doubling the concentration of our vinegar has almost doubled the rate of the reaction of this reaction. Let's just have a look at the actual reaction itself, see if there are any factors which might play a role. I can think of a few. We've got to try and keep everything constant. We've taken sodium hydrogen carbonate, sodium bicarbonate of soda, plus vinegar. Now we've got to think of things like how soluble is this? Because this reaction occurs in water. Maybe this has got to dissolve. In fact, it does. The sodium has got to come off and the, and we find that in fact a hydrogen from here swaps with this one and becomes carbonic acid and the carbonic acid breaks up into CO2 and H2O. So there's a lot of dissolving and swapping of things that is going on in this reaction. So again what happens is this sodium and that hydrogen swap places. So that's got to happen, it's got to dissolve. And then this thing becomes, with a second hydrogen, becomes carbonic acid. And the carbonic acid then got to dissolve and dissociate into carbon dioxide and water. So, in fact, there are a few stages, almost two stages to this reaction. And then the CO2, which might want to be dissolved in the water, has got to come out and go into the balloon. So, we've got to think of these various factors that could affect the rate of this reaction. But all in all, we're just doing a simple experiment to measure rates of this overall reaction. So, we've had uh, bicarbonate of soda, or sodium bicarbonate, plus vinegar, goes to form the bubbles we see, carbon dioxide, and water, and... This is the acetate ion from acetic acid, sodium acetate formed. And if we were to now take our results and try and draw a little graph of our results, I wonder what it would look like. So we could draw a graph of our concentration versus rate of reaction. And it'd be interesting to see what our results would look like. Before we move on from this, let's just look at what the units would be for our rate of, re of the reaction. Rate of anything is what is produced or used up. So we have our reactants, we have our products, we can measure the rate of reaction by producing something, and in this case we produced CO2, or we could measure the rate of the reaction by what we use up. In this case, we were increasing our CO2. We started with no CO2 and we ended up with some. So that's an increase. And so what is the unit? Well, it was meters. We're measuring a volume of gas, meters cubed over second. So these answers then would be meters cubed seconds to the minus one. Meters cubed seconds to the minus one. If it was, if we were measuring, say, um, an ionic concentration, we could have moles per decimeter cubed over time. If we were measuring the sodium acetate formation, we could have moles per decimeter cubed 
divided by time. Don't forget that rate of anything means our denominator is time. Now that we've obtained our results, let us draw a graph of the rate of reaction versus the concentration of vinegar that we used. So, what was our independent variable? What did we control ourselves? And that was the concentration of the vinegar. So, we could have used no vinegar and got, I believe, no reaction. Or... And then we used one amount of vinegar measured in moles per decimeter cubed. We don't know how many moles it was, so we say 1x amount. And then we use twice the amount, 2x amount in moles per decimeter cubed of vinegar. The actual amount we don't know, but we do know that we doubled the concentration in the second case. Then we've got the thing which is our, which is our dependent variable that depends on the concentration, and that is time, or rate of reaction. So we timed it, and we worked out a rate of the reaction, and that we're putting on our vertical axis. Rate of the reaction measured in meters cubed per second. So, here are our two results. Now, with one amount, or a concentration of 1x, we got 1.03 times 10 to the minus 4. So... This is going to be 1, and these results here are times 10 to the minus 4. So let's just remember that all of those values times 10 to the minus 4. So we've got 1.03 at a concentration of 1. So if we take our ruler, this is fairly rough, and we go up. From here, and we're looking for 1.03. There would be 1.1, so there would be 1.03 going vertic uh, horizontally, and there is our first plot. For two amounts of vinegar, we had 1.77 times 10 to the minus 4. So for two amounts, let's take our plot up there. We had 1.7. So there's 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 